Hi, it's Graham Johnson again with Ludovic and Michelle in Artelson's Molecular Graphics Lab at the Scripps Research Institute. And I'm going to step through some of the very basic functions of the Embedded Python Molecular Viewer to help get you up and running as quickly as possible. Um, to start, I had some installation instructions for getting a freeware version of, or a demo version of this application. This is Cinema 4D version 12, and hopefully you got that installed and it looks like this. If you're confident and familiar in working in Blender or in Maya, you can pretty much follow along with what we're about to do here. We have instructions on the website wiki um, to show you how to open EPMV and whichever system you're using, but in Cinema 4D it's under Python, Plugins, Pi, EPMV, and this window will pop open. And for right now I'm going to grab this little rough patch under the, uh, the Mac OS closing dot and position EPMV into my interface to allow me to, to move in the limited amount of screen space I have available on this screen capture for this video. Now what you'll notice by default is that there's a browse button and you can use this to load a molecule from your desktop but by default uh, into this text box is a code 1CRN which is a simple little protein that we can load and we're going to load it directly from the protein database and we're going to click fetch to do that and on Cinema 4D I'm going to say frame scene and you can probably not make this out on YouTube but there's a bunch of little black dots here if I roll down and click ribbons I'll see. So each one of those dots represents the position of an atom. And this file, 1CRN, is a protein database file. 1CRN is the four digit alphanumeric code for that particular protein uh, or for that crystallographic representation of that protein, that is. And we've downloaded it directly from the web from within the, the graphic user interface of Cinema 4D and from within the EPMV window that loaded it into our system and it generated a hierarchical representation of it over here in the objects manager. And in here we can see we have what's called a point cloud which represents uh, the positions of all the atoms uh, just kind of generically and we've already generated a secondary structure. Um, what you see is in this hierarchy we have the entire molecule here and we have the chains for the molecule. In this case uh, one CRN only has a single chain so there's only an A here and the elements of the secondary structure are if I click through them you can see them highlighted both in the object manager and in the viewport over here and I can click in the viewport as well and that changes the the which object is highlighted in the object manager. Now if we change the coloring scheme for example um, in the EPMV graphic user interface change color scheme from atoms using CPK to secondary structure. And we've got a little bit of a bug uh, down in the materials manager. I need to click file render all materials uh, just to update what my materials look like um, in the viewport so that these are sensible representations of the texture tags that are applied with the materials in the object manager. Now we can create, we can turn on off the ribbons and create space filling representations. You can turn those off and create ball and stick representations of the molecules and each one of these is color codable as well. Um, we have to re reapply the color once a new scheme is represented and this coloring scheme will apply to any of the uh, representations that we have selected. So if we turn on atoms and sticks at the same time and I choose color by secondary structure 
the spheres in the atoms and the, the spheres and cylinders in the sticks will be changed simultaneously. A more sensible or interesting representation uh, color scheme for this representation is to color per residue where each of the amino acids in the um, polypeptide chain that makes up this protein has a unique color for one of the 20 common amino acid types or for one of the oddball types that are also possible in these protein database files. Okay, I'm going to turn both of these off and I will click on this MSMS. That's a molecular surface representation. I'm going to hit this render button. One limitation in the host software, uh, I don't think this is true in Maya, but it's true in both Blender and Cinema 4D, is that the host software, Cinema 4D in this case, is not built to represent vertex colors the way that it is in a, uh, in a typical OpenGL environment like a molecular graphics program would use. So I'm going to change this to a different color. So in the in the software we just see this red representation but what we've done is we have a red, green, and blue channel and those uh, corresponding values from the underlying geometry are piped into these channels and we can let's color again per residue and we can get those colors patched onto the surface only available at rendering time and there it is possible to bake these colors onto the surface um, if, if we want to be able to see them in real time here. I'll close the molecular surface and generate a coarse molecular surface. This is a nice smoothed representation of the molecule, really simplified version of it and there are a couple adjustments here that allow you to get different densities and different falloff values for the proteins and it's really nice that uh, Ludovic has set this up so you can adjust it in real time and again we can color this per residue and it, it works on all the representations quite nice I think that's good for a basic introduction. On the next movie, I'll show you either, depending on which movie you click on, how to load other types of data files, or I'll show you how to make more sophisticated selections. And eventually we'll get into some of these really interesting extensions and some of the other options that are available from within the graphic user interface of, of uh, EPMV itself. Talk to you soon.